his grace we showcase in our life and the grace to trust and obey him we showcase in everything we do in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. And as we are going into your word today, Father, teach us by yourself in the name of Jesus. So that at the end of the teaching, both the teacher and the student, we have a place to say, yes, we have trusted you and we have obeyed you. And that son will come unto us, that son, daughter, welcome, well done for the good job done. And not the other voice that will tell you, mm, yes, you've done all. Yes, you've preached the gospel. Yes, you want soul of many nations. But get away because I don't know you. Or you walk out of the evil. That will not be your portion. And that will not be my portion in the name of Jesus. So let's go straight to the topic today. And it says personal spiritual hygiene. Personal spiritual hygiene. Looking about a bit of a word about what we need to do about today's topic. I look up and see what does it really mean by spiritual and what does it mean by hygiene so the first area which i will focus is about what spiritual means that is the idea of connection to something greater than ourselves and can involve our search for a deeper meaning in life and hygiene in another way refers to the creation and reinforcement of good habits let note it creation and reinforcement of good habit. And what does that habit mean? It promotes sand heads. It promotes sand heads if we can create a good habit. And uh, it says there is no different than me brushing my teeth, me taking care of my body, and uh, all sorts. So I pray, at the, before the end of the class today, God will give us grace in order to know him more. And to trust and obey him for what we're going to be discussing right now. So the test review before then the memory verse here says, which is in the book of the Second Corinthians chapter seven verse seven. He says, "Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. Let underline filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God." As I've said again, trust and obey. If you trust and obey God, what do you think? The fear of God is already in you. It means the person you fear, the person you trust, there is no way you will receive from him. And your spiritual uptaking, your hygiene will be perfect. So we know the meaning of hygiene. We know the meaning of spiritual. And what we call personal, that is individual. Now let's combine everything together. Personal spiritual hygiene. What is my stand as a Christian? How do I put myself in a place where God will listen, where God will hear me, where God will speak to me? Let's see what our introductory part says. He said, God desires is that his people will be clean outward and inward. Outward, what people see and what people cannot see. We mean that if I'm not in your office, what is your behavior like at your place of work? If I cannot see you, if the pastor cannot see you, what is your neighbor say about you? Can people, your wife, can your husband say something positive about you inwardly? Can God testify that yes, you are a child of God? Can the spirit minister to your spirit that yes, you are sons, you are a daughter of God? If your own is still having a big question mark, please let's take note of it. And I pray we will trust today and we will obey him. And by the best special grace of God, we, will be, we are going to receive what we need to do today in order to keep our hygiene updated in the name of Jesus. It says, He loves those who ask, are perfect toward him and has made adequate provision for their own round cleansing. And in Psalm 51 verse 7, David prayed for God cleansing. We also have a crucial play to, I mean, a, 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 a crucial role in this matter that we need to play as well so let's launch into the topic straight because of our time and i will be looking into the uh the review of the passage because it's a very short passage and the the, the short passage uh with which uh, let me read it let me read it we'll by time and other way let's please let's pay attention to this please very important he says 
Um, that is in Hebrew chapter 10, verses 19 to 23. Hebrew 10, 19 to 23 says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us, through the veil that is to save his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God. He says, let us draw near with true hearts in full of assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from evil and conscience and our body washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Hold fast without wavering. So the part of the passage we have just read, review part of it, part, the rest part is making us to understand that Consecration is very, very important if we are to maintain personal spiritual hygiene. We have to have a true heart to your brethren, to your fellow church member. What kind of talk do you talk? What kind of heart do you hold? What kind of a person can you say you are? And uh, our heart has to be sprinkled from evil cause. Do you have any evil agenda concerning others? It is high time because you have to remove it for you to maintain personal hygiene. You can be very beautiful outside. You can be handsome outside. But if the Spirit of God is not in you, your mind is dirty. Your spiritual hygiene is totally out of it. Praise the Lord. So our body washed must be pure. And our faith, which is very, very important in that passage, you see, faith was mentioned twice. It was mentioned twice, which means that it's an emphasis that we need to be very careful about how we tread on this journey of spiritual hygiene. It says, having the Lord Jesus as our priest transfer to all certain responsibilities because Jesus Christ will not come down and begin to wash our body, begin to clean our hearts, though that we will hold grudges. No, he has given you the power and the authority in order for you to do this. But if you fail to do it, then your hygiene is at stake. Your hygiene is at stake. And the father says, he says, example of such responsibility is the duty to wash your body with water, which, which symbolizes internal cleansing. Water uh, represents internal cleansing and washing of your body is very, very important. Praise the Lord. This identifies that our full demand of our high priest must be entertained, and we've mentioned it. So, because of the time, the first one to, be, to discuss this morning is a Personal spiritual hygiene and it is response and it is benefit. Personal spiritual hygiene, based on what has been discussed, I believe everybody understands that. And uh, now the next thing I'm going to look at is uh, what are its benefits? What are its benefits? This is taking question and answer format, but I will be very conscious about it. And that is why I've highlighted what is very important at the moment. What is a personal spiritual hygiene? It's been discussed and I've explained it. Consciousness and decisiveness. Efforts. Consciousness and decisive efforts. And decisive effort. And uh, by an individual to purge themselves from all forms of filthiness. The person we've read give us that kind of explanation. And then what does the word of God say on the cleansing exercise? The first thing is the word of God reveals our true person. Because... You see, the word, the word is the word, is the two edges sword. You know, it pierces through. So, when the word of God dwells in you, the people around you can easily read it, can read whom you are. They don't even need to hear your message, but they can see God in you. They can identify that, oh, yeah, this is of God. This is of heaven. No wonder they can say, Paul and the devil can say, Paul, I know. You know, Jesus, I know, but who are you? Because the world is not in you. Can you even pray for the headache to go? If the world is in you, the faith we mentioned at the highest stage will be there. So the, anything you pray for will disappear. Because Christ made us know the greater works he has done, we also can do it. But can you be identified with that? So your spiritual hygiene is at stake on this note. So the next one here it says, True person to us and renew our mind on daily basis. Renew your mind on a daily basis. And then we can see what is recorded in the 12th uh, the Romans chapter 2. 12 Romans 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, 
but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. What does your mind occupy? What do you keep in your mind? You need to empty it. Open and you will see that thing you have been looking forward to do will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Release yourself. Open your mind and let God occupy that soul of yours and you will see his reward in the name of Jesus. So the next one here is saying to us that uh, that uh, gave, uh, Isaiah 1 chapter 16 he gave us some instruction on personal spiritual hygiene and which also about in the same line. It says, watch you. It says, make you clean. Put away evil doings from before my eyes cease and cease to do evil. Cease to do evil. I don't know which one is mine. I don't know which one. I know mine. I can easily pick mine. Sorry to say that. But yours, I don't know. But you know, as you can see, begin to wash it. Brethren, we are not here to persecute anyone. We are not here to tell that you are a sinner, you are this, you are that. No. This, I'm preaching to the God, I mean, to, to, to the same. So pick whatever is yours. Because iron sharpened iron. That is what we are doing this morning. Pick whatever is yours. Because when Christ should come right now, will you be there? Will you go with him? Will you receive the word? Welcome. Or what will you receive? That is what we are doing. I remember what Brad Paul said. He said, we die, I die daily. Do you die daily to make your checklist that yes, I'm still with God if he comes right now. So let's see what does the next one say. He says, what instruction did Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 14? Jeremiah 4 14. He says to us, he said, give on personal spiritual hygiene and then wash your heart from wickedness and evil faint thoughts. Busy body. Don't let us engage ourselves as a busy body. Let's engage with our heart with songs, inspirational songs. If you don't want to listen to song, go to the street, minister to souls, and win souls of money nations, and you will be what a vessel unto honor, and your God will be happy. The heaven will rejoice concerning that souls that come to him. Don't, don't use that method. If it's in the night, you don't know what to do. Go on your social network, begin to preach the gospel, send messages, a controversial messages, and engage your followers to welcome, oh, let's discuss this. Let's discuss this. And that is how we can do this. And God will help us with our busy time. If we know what we cannot do at that time. And the book says, Oh, Jerusalem, wash thy heart from wickedness. That is Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 14. Wash your heart from wickedness, that thou may be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? How long will you keep grudges? How long will you keep yourself out of the system? How long will you occupy your heart with evil thoughts? Change it today and your hygiene will be at the topmost. Apostle Paul directed believers to keep their physical hygiene body from two works of the flesh. And I'm going to add more to it based on what is recorded in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Apostle Paul is saying here that sins and loss is a very, very important. But to wrap it up, in according to 1 John 2 16, 1 John 2 16 says, For all that is in the world, the loss of flesh, and say the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of what? Of the evil. Those are the ones that really compare everything together. Are you trusting God? Are you obeying Him? Are you lost into the world? Do you allow lost? Do you allow sin to rule the affairs of your life? This is the right time to check it. And God will help you. And God will help me too in the name of Jesus. Because of our time, I will be rounding up. And then I, 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 I'll just leave the rest. And the, the, the question is there on the board. We can see. But very important thing, under the class activity, say, can a dirty person approach the throne of grace? Brethren, I want somebody to answer this. Two people to talk about this in 30 seconds, please. Let's, let's unmute. Whomever wants to talk, please unmute. Can a dirty person approach the throne of grace? Please just give us a direct answer and a bit of a little explanation in 30 seconds. If you are there, can please talk. Otherwise, I'm going to call someone. We are going to the church, so we need to get ourselves ready. We need to get ourselves ready to our normal system. Praise right. the Lord. Hallelujah. I think from the Bible reading of today, the call to worship Psalms 24 clearly answers that who shall who can ascend into the hill of God? He that has a clean hands 
Uh, so a, a dirty person, unless is clean first by the blood of Jesus, cannot ascend. Thank you, sir. Uh, of God, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. More grace. So, second person, second person, second person, please, quick, quick. Second person, quick, quick. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Pastor, I would just also like to add to what Pastor Charles said. Uh, I think it's Psalms chapter 51. Uh, a broken and a contract spirit the Lord will not despise. If the person is dirty and is not proud and he recognizes, hey, Lord, I am dirty and he cries for help, the Lord will extend his help. And just like Pastor Charles, Charles said, the washing of the blood by the blood will take place, and then that person can be accepted. But if, the, if uh, an obstinate man, a, a, a proud man, or the one who doesn't uh, know that he is dirty, mm -hmm. and there's no way that evil person can approach the man. Thank you, sir. More grace. So now, those are the questions that really answer our second lesson outline. Uh, so I don't need to do much work here. Here, is for me to just round up. You can see, read, pick whatever is yours. Ask the Lord Jesus, allow his word to transform you. Never go back to the sin again. Avoid anything evil. Avoid the deed of the flesh and study to show yourself approved. Pray without ceasing. Worship. Worship. If prayer fails, if everything fails, brethren, Fellowshipping with God and the what? Praise and worship will not fill you. Because by the time you are fellowshipping, you will see brethren that will encourage you. Can you see we are encouraging one another this morning? Pastor said something linking to what Pastor Charles said. And then we can see the ministration this morning is also aligned with what we are talking. Can't you see fellowshipping is good? Assuming you are not here this morning, how will you have known this? Yes, you may have known this. But in another way that is being presented this morning, how will you have known it? Brethren, I would post this on the, it's on the official network. So I'm not going to put it in the, uh, the WhatsApp. So I want us to go to the network. Please, I'll share it with others. Read it. Think about it. And let's, I, I want to see the first person to read it on the Facebook, on the, uh, on the YouTube. So that person, please post it to the classroom. Then there will be an award in the name of Jesus. Finally, brethren, finally, finally, because of our time, we say God is clean always. Therefore, believer must be cleansed. God is looking for who? You and myself as what? A vessel unto honor, pure without any wrinkle. You can be available for his use if you allow yourself to be cleansed. Brethren, let's bow our head and pray. The Lord, help me, O oh Lord. You know what the Bible says? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added. By the time you are seeking God and his righteousness, you are obeying and you are trusting God. Therefore, your personal hygiene will come to the peak of it, not the outward beauty we are seeing, not the world, what the world is seeing, not what everyone is seeing, but what God sees in you. That is the most important thing that you need to work on. What is the association you are keeping, brethren? Pray that, Lord, help me. Cleanse me within and without, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. You know, all these things can be continued. So you need to pray that, Lord, give me the grace to check myself on a daily basis, O oh Lord. Give myself, give me grace to check myself on a daily basis. And what about your physical well-being? What food do you take into your body? Can that food help you to pray? Can that food help you to sleep? Can that food help you? What do you read the word of God? If you have not been reading the word of God, word of God, that is the food I'm talking about. Begin to read. Begin to study to show yourself approved. And you will see the miraculous thing. God will use through you so that your physical hygiene can be very, and your personal hygiene can be very up to date with your maker. Father, we thank you. Give us the grace to go back to this and regurgitate about it and read more about it and to study to show ourselves and pray about this in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we are praying and giving thanks. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.